Um, and let's take a look here. Well, and that's, that's something you want to think about. This is made for many different parts, actually, um, as you can see. Um, you know what? Let's call that that. Uh, are we capturing? Yeah, we are capturing. Good. Um, folks, let me get your attention for a few. I want to show you um, something called uh, forward kinematics, which if you want to animate, um, you really have to know how to do. And if you want to make characters move, you have to know how to do it, too. So let me get your attention for a few. What I'm going to show you is um, I just modeled this sort of rough bicycle. What I want to do is I want to be able to animate this bicycle moving around. And a while ago, we covered the idea of if you, um, if you take one thing, you can animate it and move it and keyframe it. But in this case, this is a bunch of things. Um, and I want to show you what I mean. We've talked about the schematic before, right? This. This shows us all the objects that are seen. And you can see it's all of these separate pieces. What I have to do is I have to come up with a structure for these, a hierarchical structure. Um, by the way, can someone get Rebecca? Are you over there, Juan? Can you just knock Rebecca, get, get her ear things? <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, I have to put these together in a structure so I can animate them. We're going to cover a thing on uh, forward kinematics. Um, and then I can make it all work together, which will save me a whole lot of time and energy. Uh, I'm going to show you a couple of resources we have. Um, if I go to our website here, I have this, how to do forward kinematics. I also have videos on this, and we're making one now. Um, these are the four steps we need to follow, and we need to follow it precisely. And if we don't follow it, it will fail. It will not work. If you don't do these things in this order, your stuff won't animate, period. So we have to arrange our objects, position the center points, parent the objects, which is hooking them together with this relationship, and then animate the objects. Um, and again, if there are questions, you can ask. Now, I've arranged my objects here with the modeling, but I have to arrange them here in this schematic. I need to put them together in a structure so I can figure out what's what. Uh, one of the first things I need to do is I need to freeze everything because if you look here, you'll see that stuff is based on other stuff. See those purple lines? Those purple lines mean these things have dependencies which can be trouble. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select everything here, 21 pieces, see that? I'm going to um, freeze it all. You see those lines broke off there. Um, and then I should be able to do things like delete the curves I don't need. Like this is a curve I don't need. And everything should stay solid. These are curves I don't need. Delete. 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 OK. Now I have to start to organize this thing. This is the main body of my bike. I'm going to hit my F key here and take a look at what's there. And actually, what is that? I don't even know what that is. I wonder if I can delete it. Let's see what happens. OK, maybe that's OK. I'm going to double click this and rename this, and I'm going to call it bike. Uh, I hate caps. Caps lock is on there. OK, now I'm going to move that. Uh, I'm holding down the V key to push this over here. And now I'm going to start to attach stuff to it. Um, this is a curve I probably do not need. This is a, aha, that are, those are my handlebars. Let's put the handlebars here, because other stuff's going to be attached to them. In fact, we'll put them here. And I'm going to rename that. Handlebar. Uh, this is another curve I probably don't need. What is this? Uh, that's my seat post. Um, were I good at this, I would probably rename it, but I'm not going to. Um, you probably should. That's my seat. I'm going to put that there. My front wheel is going to go over here. My back wheel is going to go back here. Uh, that is the spindle for the wheel. We'll put that there. Uh, this is, let's see what this is. I'm going to hit my F key. That's my spindle for my back wheel. And I really should name those, but uh, these are the pedals. And this is a curve I don't need. 
And then where are these guys? Ah, over here. Look at that. There's some stuff I forgot. Um, this is one of my pedals. And I'll put that there. This is one of my other pedals. I'll put that there. And what is this? That's a curve I don't need. Okay. Uh, it may have been. I, you know what I think it was? I think it was when I, um, I I'm going to go to a hidden line removal here because you'll see more what's going on here. I think when I made the things that attach the pedals, that may have been one of those. But I'm not that worried about it right now. Um, as long as all my parts are here and I can get rid of all my curves and I can organize this, I'm, I'm in order. I am doing, and I want to show you this, that. I arrange my objects. I'm going to do number two now. Number two is hugely important. Position your center points. Everything rotates from some place. If I select the body of the bike and I hit rotate, it's rotating strangely from right where I want it to, I think. Yes, that is where I want it to. So I don't even have to worry about that one. Uh, but let's see this one. Where's that rotating from? That's okay, but it's not okay this way. Not that it would rotate that way much anyway. I'm going to move where it rotates from by when I have the object selected, going to center and translating that center point to right there. Now, let me keep going here and you'll see why this becomes important. Um, here is my seat post. Let's see where that rotates from. Uh, and I might actually need some other windows here. Uh, I'm going to hit my F key here, here, and here. I probably don't want it to rotate from there. I probably want it to rotate from its base. So I'm going to translate it down to here. And what that will mean is that if it were to rotate, it would, ah, I should never do that, never. If it were to rotate, it would rotate from that point rather than from that point in the middle. Really, really important. Uh, my seat, let's take that one and take a look at it. If this rotates, wow, that's in the right place too. That's roughly where I want to rotate from, so it looks like it rotates on the seat post. Good. Uh, let's see down here. I'm going to hit my F key to frame that up. And let's see where that's rotating from. That's looking okay. Now let's check the pedals. Um, I want that moved over a little bit. I would want that to rotate from down here. And I have to go to center point here. I'll put that there. And let's check the other pedal. F. I'll put that there. And I might even want to move that slightly like this. The reason being, if I rotate this now, it's going to rotate like that, which is what I want to have happen. Um, let's check the rear wheel. The rear wheel should be fine. F, rotate. That's looking pretty good. Okay, so I have done now. Arrange them, position them. I have to do the parenting. The parenting is the big difference here. This is the first time you're going to be grouping stuff, putting it together so you can make it work as one thing. If I were to animate this right now, I would have to animate each piece of it. After I parent it, that's not true anymore. Now, I know that the bike is the main thing. So what I'm going to say is this is going to be the parent of everything, and everything will be attached to it. So I take my bike like that. I hit a button down here that says parent. When I do, my mouse buttons are going to change. You're going to see it in the bottom of the screen. Left picks a child, middle picks a parent, right terminates. I want this to be a child, right? I want the handlebars to be a child. Uh, and I probably want, I want this to be a child. And I want the rear wheel. Well, I actually want the rear cylinder, which is going to be this, to be a child. Right mouse click. Then I'm done with that particular parenting operation. Now I want the rear wheel to be parented to the rear um, axle. So I'm going to select this. I'm going to hit parent again. And then middle mouse picks a parent. That'll be connected like that. Right mouse click. Um, I want this and this to both be parented to this. So I'll select both of these guys and I'll hit parent and I'll middle mouse, right mouse click. Uh, I want the axle here, as you can see it, to be connected to the handlebar. 
uh, and then the wheel to be connected to the axle. So let's select that, parent, middle mouse, right mouse, select that, parent, middle mouse, right mouse, and the seat should be connected to the seat stem. Parent, like that, right mouse. This is a primitive rig. This is a means of sticking this whole thing together so I can handle it in one place. Um, yes. That's a good question, because I decided to do it differently. That, that's really the only reason, and, and I want to show you why. Um, before I show you why, there's something I should have done already that I haven't done. What is it? Save. That's right. I need to save. After I've gotten this far, I want to make sure I save it, because you could lose all your work at this point. Um, I'm going to call this bike one, and then I'm going to answer that question. At this point, what should happen is if I middle mouse select my bike and I rotate it, watch what happens. It all moves together happily and turns from there. Uh, as a matter of fact, if I want this bike to be level, which I do, control Z, I can do this and my bike is ready to go. If I want to turn the handlebars, if I middle mouse my handlebars, that happens. That's why I did it, Rebecca. I, I, if I'd done it the other way, it would have worked. I just would have been figuring it out differently. So I'm ready to animate this thing. I have all four steps down there now. Let's say uh, I'm going to zoom out a little bit here, and we want this bike to roll along somewhere. I'll do it from a top view. Uh, I'm going to middle mouse select this. Um, I'm going to, I have 100 frames here. I'll give myself uh, 500 and I'm going to keyframe the position. So I'm going to keyframe it there, and I'll have it go forward for a couple seconds to about here. And then I'll have it go this way. And notice it's not turning. I want to show you what it's doing right now. It's going like that, and then like that. And then I'll have it um, go to about here and end up back over there. And if I look at a camera view of that, you can see this play. I'm going to do the turn separately. And this is this idea of forward kinematics. Forward and then kinny meaning cinema and matic automatic. Forward automatic motion. I first do these broad things, like with just the movements. I'm now going to do the rotations separately. Um, the rotations on the bike, it's going to start there. Uh, by the time it gets close to here, it should be ready to turn, I'm going to say probably around here. So I'm going to keyframe it again just slightly differently. And by the time it's going that way, we want it totally turned that way. And I'm going to key that so that this is what it's doing right now. It's coming along. It's actually turning way too fast there. Um, I can fix that. <laughs> This is my animation editor, the zero key. This is showing all of my stuff. Uh, I bet you this is my rotation. Nope. Rotation X. There it is. Um, this is how that rotation is happening. I need this rotation to happen later. I'm going to add a keyframe. There. And then I'm going to move that keyframe around like that. Now what's going to happen is it's going to go straight and then turn later, just like that. See that? Now let's keep it going. Uh, we're going to get down here and we're going to turn again. I'll get down to about here, let's say, and let's keyframe it again. I'm just going to key that value. And I'll get to here and we will rotate it that way. And let's see what that's looking like. It's coming along, goes that way. That turn is also taking too long. Actually, it should happen a little bit sooner, so I'll back it up like that. So let's see what's happening here. He's coming, or she, I don't know. Turns there, then this turn has to happen quicker. Let's see if that'll do it. 
and it actually has to turn further. I'm going to raise that a little bit more. Oh, well, that's too far. Let's see if that's how that's looking. Come and he goes around, comes like that. Okay, I'll live with that. Now the thing I want to do is I want to make the pedals turn. If I rotate this, ah, control Z, the pedals should turn with it. Yes, which they do. And I'll keep that at a constant speed. Um, what I'll do is in this window here, we'll give it a couple rotations a second. So I'm going to keyframe the rotations there, and I'll go to frame 24, uh, and I will give it twice or so around. Let's say to about there, and key that. Good. Now I want that to keep going. Uh, let me see if that looks okay up here, by the way. If I hit play, good. In terms of keeping it going, I'm going to hit my um, animation editor again. That's the curve. I want this curve to keep going over and over. If I go to curves, I go to cycle with offset. It should keep cycling and cycling and cycling. Okay, what are your thoughts on that? Does that seem doable? You don't have to do something this complicated. You could try something much simpler. Um, every, most of what you see in animation is this type of animation. Most of what you see in 3D animation. It is forward kinematics. It is people modeling objects, then parenting them together, then basically creating these structures out of them, like that, and then animating those structures. So if I had to do something like this pen over here, I have two parts, and I basically have to model both of them, put them in position, figure out the center points, and then start animating them. Uh, if I had to animate, um, if I had to animate this chair that I'm in, I have to model all the parts separately, I then have to parent them, I have to follow this guideline. Arrange the objects, position the center points, parent them together, and then animate them. Uh, if I'm doing a car, I have wheels, I have doors. If I'm doing a cart, if I'm doing a gun, like think of all the first person shooters you've seen, all of the guns, like when the shotgun, when the, the, you know, the action pulls back and then another shell comes in, or when someone puts in a new magazine, that's all just parented objects. And they're just basically animating them the way they go together. So I want you to try this, not necessarily with a bike, it can be something much simpler. It could be as simple as like this bottle right here, which would be two or three parts, this, this, and the cap. If you can model it so that it could screw on and then close the cap, you would understand this. Um, the reason we have to understand this is this. Here is um, the rig we use in 3D2. Like let's say I wanted to put someone on top of this spike. Um, here is her biped rig. And this is a person, you'll see, like that. Uh, it would be a little person right now, but heck, we could deal with that. Da -da -da. I wonder if I can put them as like a tiny doll on top of this thing. Yeah, sort of like that. Um, if I wanted to get this person to ride this bike, this is the rig. There. Okay? You will never understand that. Never. Unless you understand this. So, make a simple rig for anything. And then you could work on these higher level things, okay? Then we can help you with that. Um, and um, 